welcome back. We are still looking at this lecture here. And from my understanding, I got almost through it. It's really weird to pick up in the middle of a lecture, so I'm going to kind of review a little bit, kind of acclimate us back into C. We're looking at C because today I'm going to show you how it's applied towards objective C. And we're going to see it's practically the same thing. It's also very similar to Java in terms of what it is uh, we're trying to accomplish for the object-oriented part of it. So we looked at simple little examples of non-object oriented implementations, the concept of arrays, the concept of addressing and memory. I even talked about pointers last time, I believe. And I got into the pointer concept. We'll look at pointers today and some more memory concepts today. And uh, elementary file handling, probably not ever going to use file handling in Objective-C. Who knows, though, you might, you know, want to open up and load a contents of a file into an array or something, or, you know, you might use files, but it's actually done using the lower level C constructs, so it's pretty, very C-like. Um, we talked about the differences between passing arguments by value and passing arguments by reference, which is different than what we get in the Java environment, where everything is by reference, or in the, some other languages where everything is by value or vice versa. Everything is by reference in Objective-C as well, but we actually use pointers when we want to do that. We can also pass by value, and we'll see that in um, some examples coming up as well. Uh, we looked at the concept of multiple files, externs, structures. I believe we looked at structures. Structures and unions are supported in Objective-C. They come from C. And for those, and we don't have this in Java, so this was a new concept for us. Is this where I stopped, actually? No. No further down? Yeah, okay, good. All right, so we did. We learned about structures last time. What about the concept of the enumeration? Yeah, okay, we looked at that as well. And a type define, which is also supported in Objective-C. A little bit uh, more on pointers. Oh, yeah, we went through this. We went through the differences between the string, array, and character arrays, and stuff like that. And we have pointers to functions as well. We have more complicated things that get done. Oh, yes, you know what? We actually went through this whole history here, the API. I remember that as well. Do we have a slide number we stopped on? <laughs> probably right around here, I think. All right, so this is probably where we stopped last time, so we'll pick it. I'll just, I'm will just going to pick it up right here then. Um, what we're looking at is everything done at runtime. So Objective-C is a purely dynamic language compared to C, which is both static and dynamic, depending upon how we're programming in it. So we use a dynamic typing, linking, and binding. <clears throat> and we're going to see with the alloc and with the retain, with the release, how this is actually done for us. Um, and I have a separate lecture on that that will go through all those things. Allows for greater flexibility, bottom line, greater flexibility. Uh, minimizes RAM and CPU usage, makes them more efficient, makes programs run a little bit faster. <coughs> so, to import or to include, we can actually do both. Uh, we have the import, which is more commonly used in Objective-C. C++ include will insert the head.h file into the code when it's been added before. Even if it's been added before, it gets inserted in. The Objective-C import um, uh, checks to see if it's been included already, then if it hasn't, import it. So it imports beforehand. Um, so there's just minor differences between the two. In Objective-C, you'll see import being used. Include actually works. And I'll show you some examples, and we could play around with it if I remember, <coughs> where you can just switch the word, and it actually works just fine, which is kind of interesting. Uh, messages. So uh, we've looked at this already, but just to review the point, almost every object manipulation is done by sending objects a message. And the message word is the object and then the message that's going to be sent to the object. So two words within the brackets here, the object identifier and the message to be sent. Uh, because of dynamic binding, the message and the receivers are joined at runtime. Uh, so they are not, <coughs> it's not executed until it's actually executed. So there's nothing pre-compiled. There's no pre-anything. It's done all, all the way dynamic at runtime. So some differences in the basic syntax. We have the C++ syntax. Actually, this is really C. It says C++, but it's really C <coughs> because we're looking at a function. So avoid a function. And actually, we'd get in trouble if we called it a function because that's a reserved word, actually. <laughs> so this is just for illustrative purposes. 
where we have the opening and closing brackets in the parameter list inside, and we say integer x, integer y, and character z here. And then we go, if we created an object of this, we would go object.function if this was inside, if this was a method inside of an object. For the objective C syntax, <coughs> what we're looking at is the data type inside of brackets with a minus sign because it's an instance method. Yep, and the name of the function, just the same as before, but we use a colon here with integer x and integer y. And character z, this just word wrapped, it's all in the same line. And then uh, we send the message here, function x, y, and z, <coughs> to the object. So syntax is very uh, different. Concept is identical, which is really nice if you happen to be familiar with C, uh, which it makes it worthwhile. We also have the keyword which is the ID, which is, well, it's a keyword, it's also a data type. It's a typeless data type. It's a generic data type. It's almost like a pointer. Um, so the ID indicates an identifier of an object, much like the pointer, but we don't have to use the asterisk, and we don't have to give it a name. We just say ID. We've basically created a pointer to an object. It uses dynamic typing. For instance, a pen is a class. So if we said extern ID pen, <coughs> ID my pen, my pen is equal to new pen, looks very similar to, you know, syntax is a little bit different, reads kind of the same, looks very similar to the C++ or the Java actually interpretation of it. Um, so we send the message new, which is an initializer that says give me a new pen and it's almost like running, uh, well, it doesn't really run a constructor, it just create, gives us a new object, so like saying new pen actually in Java. <clears throat> which says, you know, pen, my pen is equal to new pen. <laughs> so, which is pretty much the same concept. Okay, memory allocation. So we've seen the word alloc being used. This is what it really means. Objects are created dynamically through the keyword alloc. Alloc just does nothing more than create the object for us. Why they didn't build it into the syntax? No clue. Perhaps in the future it will be, but we have to actually allocate memory for the object. So objects are dynamically deallocated using the words release. So alloc release is kind of like the, the pair or auto release, which means if there aren't any reference counters to it, get rid of it, which just basically automatically releases it. It does the same thing, however. So auto release deallocates the object once it is out of scope. When there's no more references to it in the memory, it's out of scope. If it's out of scope, well, we're not being used anymore. Get rid of it, I think. So, no, none of these words are built in. No, nope, they're all libraries. <laughs> they're libraries to keep track of the memory management. Why this is actually done this way is because the memory management on your phone, on an iPhone or an iPad, is done a little bit differently than it is on a Mac computer or another architecture that's running Objective C on there. So it's actually special libraries that are used for the different platforms to actually take advantage of the memory capabilities and the usage for the platform. So it makes it more platform, multi-platform multi dependent if we auto-release and we release and then we allocate. But those, because those functions are not, um, they're not Objective-C, they're, they're on top of a, li they're a library protocol that's basically allocating stuff for us, and deallocating, depending upon the platform. So we get the library automatically that's called for the platform that we're working on. So it'll work correctly, um, given the memory management and memory configuration that we're having to deal with. Ownership. Objects are initially owned by the ID that created them. Well, it's kind of like the reference in Java. When we say person my person is equal to new person, well, that's my person's the reference that owns the object. So when we talk about my person, it's referring to the object. <laughs> so that's the ownership capability. So like C pointers, multiple IDs can use the same object. They can have multiple owners. Because you can have many different references to the same object. So it's pointer implemented. However, just like C, if one of the IDs releases the object, then any of the remaining pointers will be released as well, making it an invalid memory location. So if you have a ton of things pointing to one object, one of those things that's pointing to that object removes it from memory. You have what's called a dangling pointer in C, or an invalid object in Objective-C. 
because it's going to go to that memory location, but it's been released. So it's kind of like, you know, you all have something. We all have the right to use the car, but someone takes the car and off the cliff. Nobody has the car anymore. <laughs> so, so it gets rid of it. Um, all right, so uh, that's that causes a problem. So we have the word retain uh, that can allow the object to stay if one of I, the ID releases it. So we can send a message retain to the object, especially if we have multiple references to that object. Retain will prevent a release from working. So if we retain the object, that means, you know, don't allow another reference to get rid of it, which means, you know, there's restrictions on who can drive the car, <laughs> and the car has to stay in the parking lot so it's available. Then you're saying, then you're putting some control on that object, which is nice. Um, and you're not you're preventing problems. So retain is used to keep it in memory and to prevent others, other references from removing that memory. We also have prototyping functions. Well, this is what we get in the, um, you know, in the ability to kind of specify. So when declaring an implementation function for a class, there must must begin with a plus or a minus which is part of the prototyping. You know, we're saying a plus that indicates it's a class method that can only be used by the class itself, which really turns it into a function, if you think about it. You know, the differences between a method and a message and a function. Well, function is usually global for the class usage and not instance related. Messages are normally instance related, so most of your messages are going to have a minus next to them. So it can only be used by the class itself. In other words, they're a private function owned by the class is the plus, so the class itself can use it. So it's kind of like going back to public, private, protected. So plus makes it private, which, you know, actually I would have switched to, I would have switched the symbols around, you know, because minus makes it, you know, limited. Plus is everything, right? Yeah. So it's backwards. Minus indicates an instance method to be used by the client program. It's public. So minus is public. Plus is private, but you can run it from the class on the class. But you have to have ownership to the class. Or you have to have access to the class in order to do that, which means you're inside of the class if you're doing that. So it's a private method, private function. So here's some examples, and this is the node.h class, and this is what's referred to as the interface. We're going to see a live example of this today. Um, so it's inherited, er, inherited from NS object. And we have two pieces of data in here. We have a node link. This is a link list, actually. And then we have an in, uh, integer contents, one value that's going to be held for each one of the nodes in this particular list. The plus is going to be the uh, new, which is going to be some, some particular. And this is a, an ID, which means it's a, a reference. It's not, really an, it's not really a data type. Void set content. Uh, set link, get content, get link, some generic methods essentially. They're all, this is a class level one, these are method instance level ones. So, and then the counteract to this, the, uh, the uh, mode node.m. And going back here, this is actually a method here. This is a method call new. So, like people like to do init new. Um, when you make a new instance, you can use this as a constructor, essentially. See, in Java, constructors are kind of interesting because in Java, they automate. We have constructors. We just name. We, they're just methods inside of the class that we give the same name as the class. The same concept doesn't work in Objective C. Instead, we have to make our own methods, and we're going to call them new or init or something. And if you were in the iPhone class, I went over initializers. So this is really an initializer method that's going to initialize the class. So if you see the implementation of this class, when you run new, it's going to return a, well, it's going to make a node alloc. It's going to allocate the new one. And uh, we can actually take that a step further and run init. If we run init, it'll run the objects in it, or it'll run any init we've implemented throughout the hierarchy. So init is the initializer that's really what's making the you know, the, the constructor behavior work, you know. Alloc is just making the new instance. And if you see, if we make a new instance of it, oh, we don't have it. If I made a new instance of this node, I'd say new. You know, I'd say back here, I think I had an example actually that said uh, new. Here we go, pen new. 
It's running a method new that we have in this class, pen, that's allocating. So we don't have to run alloc. Either way you want to design it, it's up to you. <laughs> that's just kind of a, it makes it more, makes it more Java-like, actually, when you make methods can call them new. New is not a reserved word either, neither is in it. You can use anything you want, actually. I believe you can actually use the keyword function as well, <laughs> but you don't want to do that. It's kind of difficult to figure out what a function is. It's too generic. But here, new is pretty pretty obvious. It's going to make a uh, node alloc, run alloc on a node, and uh, set content, integer number. Content is going to be equal to a number. Node asterisk next. You know, this is going to be a, a pointer to the next node. If you're familiar with C or C++, a link list is a concept. We always have a piece of data that the node is carrying, and then we have a pointer to the next piece of data. This is a linked list, essentially. And then uh, auto-release, that's going to say, well, when it goes out of scope, release it. You know, we're not going to re release it right now, but when we're no longer using it, when the node's been deleted or something, go ahead and release it. And then the link is going to be equal to next retain. Well, retain it. Don't let anybody else, because we have a pointer to it. Don't let anybody else get rid of our next because we we're pointing to it. Otherwise, we're going to have a dangling pointer. Get contents, get link. Those are some generic functions. I'm going to show you a people example today. It's just like our Java person, and you'll see it all come together. Uh, but that's kind of an example of the two kind of, and if you get anything out of this, just get the interface and the implementation concept. The M is where you get that implementation from. This is why it's, a, this is why it's called M, by the way. So. And in here, the H, don't know where the H comes from, seriously. <laughs> Some of the stuff, you know, they try to make, you know, oh, this is where the M comes from. Uh, you know what, though? You know, I, I, I can grab the next step stuff for the NS, but I don't know where that H, H is coming from. Uh, outside of C, when it was a header file. That's about all I can get from that. Anyway, so that's where the M is supposed to come from. All right. So C++ versus Objective-C. Adds object-oriented metaprogramming and generic programming to C. Comes with standard libraries. The NS is all the standard libraries. Has numerous usage, large and complex code for object-oriented programming. Yep. Only adds object-oriented programming to C. Everything else is C. <laughs> Everything is like, you can even run, and we'll see it today, we're going to run printf and scanf. We're going to run C commands in Objective-C. Has no standard libraries dependent on other libraries, because it's C with some extension libraries to turn it into Objective-C. Mostly is for application building, simpler way of handling classes and objects than C++, really. It's actually much simpler, if you think about it. Objective-C 2.0, so this is back in 2007 or 2000, I think it was 2008, but okay, 2007 is when Leopard came out, releases Objective-C 2.0, which is on Leopard, which is why if you have a anything below, let's say, Snow Leopard, you can't, really can't do a current modern day because you're working with a different version of Objective-C, so you need, really need Lion, actually right now, or uh, uh, Snow, uh, what is it? Uh, Mountain Lion, which is the one that's out right now, I guess. Uh, Leopard, significant changes with 10.5. Added garbage collection, as we've seen so far. Um, adds garbage collection to it. Instance methods, public functions are defined differently using property. I'm going to show you the differences between property and not using property. And we'll talk about properties a little bit today. I've got some source code examples for you. We look at our linked list implementation here, just to continue on with the example, this is linked list.m. This is the whole file, just to preview, kind of like, you know, the what it looks like. We have remove, append, get value, all these different things. And then here's an example of a stack.h and a stack.m. Just to, and I've, I've got some better examples for you, actually. And then a main. So it follows through with the same concept of there being a dot h, a dot m, and then there's a main. And we only have one main, we don't have it in pairs. This is a main.c file, however, that uses and it works. So as an example, this code here, stack.h and stack.m is written in Objective C. And it's following through with the methods here of uh, the syntax of Objective C, and then it works with this C main program. <coughs> Excuse me, this is written in C. 
but it's using the syntax for the objects that were created. So S, which is our um, which is our object, you know, S push one, S push two, and then printf is a C command. Yeah, <clears throat> it says uh, pop it off. It's going to release um, that the one that's on the top of the stack. So don't worry about it if you don't know what a stack is, but um, the interesting thing to note is it's sort of a combination of C and Objective-C that's going on with this main program. If you were to compile it, <coughs> you would use the framework for COCA, and uh, you'd run it. In fact, this is a runnable program. You can cut and paste it, put it into files, and see how it works. I'm not going to bother. I have some better stuff for you. But um, References. <coughs> we have a couple books out here. <coughs> Object-oriented programming and an evolutionary approach. Concepts of Programming Languages, and that's, this is actually a really nice book. It's very generic. It works with all different programming languages, not just Objective-C. But if you haven't taken a Programming Language Concepts course, it's not a bad replacement for one. Apple Developer Connection. I'm going to show you something now that you're going to find helpful, I hope. <coughs> Suffering from allergies today, by the way. It affects my breathing, <laughs> ah, but I won't complain. Okay, <laughs> I added a couple links to the uh, behacker.com website since the last time I saw you. If we go into the Objective-C programming site, this is the one I added. So if you go in, it's right underneath the course syllabus. It's, uh, ooh, I thought it was going to take me to the site. Um, it should either open it up or... It's, it's actually, if it was linked correctly on other operating systems, it might actually take you to the site. The site has in it this really lovely 106-page Objective-C programming manual that's written by Apple, that's on their Apple developer site. And this is coming from the Apple developer site. Where it gets in, and this reads like a really, because most people, so last time people were asking me for textbooks, and I went out and looked at textbooks, and everything's like 1.0 or everything's old that I have. This is based on the current version. It's made by Apple. It's the current version of Objective-C, the 2.0 version, and it's from Leopard or above. And if you scroll through it, it's 106 pages. It is a textbook. And uh, defining a class, declaring properties, references. If you click on these suckers, it actually takes you to the page. And it's really great reading. It's really easy and really straightforward. As an example, here's your ID explanation. You know, you're like, well, what is this ID? You know, you can look that up. <coughs> what is the auto release? You can see the type defined, and here's your structure in here. Dynamic typing is in here. Um, so this is probably going to be the best source. And it's uh, electronic. It's in the PDF file. It is open source. It's available for free. There's no fee for it. And I put the link in the course notes. And next time when I teach this course, I'm going to have this as the textbook. Seriously. Um, it's better than any book that I have found, actually, because it's way up to date. Very current. Um, so if you're having problems, you have questions about uh, overriding, overloading, uh, creating classes, it's, it's a lot of reading. Uh, which is why if you go up to the table of contents in the beginning and you click on memory management as an example, it takes you to it. So it's hyperlinked, which is uh, makes it nice for navigation. So actually in the memory management section, it talks about garbage collection and, and manual reference counting and automatic reference counting and all those different terms I've been talking about. So uh, that's your textbook for the course. <laughs> it's free. <clears throat> All right, so I also put in here how to create how to create class objects. If you click on that link, you're going to get the occlasses.zip file. occlasses.zip file has one, two, three examples in it, and those are the three examples I'm going to go over today. So example number one. If you download it and put it on your desktop, and double click on the Xcode project, it should work on your computer. Actually, it should work in the previous version of Xcode as well. This is uh, not Xcode version specific. So if you 
want to, go ahead and download that. Does anyone know how to make the screen bigger? The text in the screen? Uh, I'm going to take a few seconds here and see if I can figure out how to make this bigger. Maybe there's a zoom. Um, hmm. Enter full screen. No. Um, let's see. Uh, hmm. Well, it's kind of small here, but uh, if you download, um, download the file and look at it on your own computer, what I'm going to do is go through the source code for you and show you the different parts. So if you, can, you may not be able to see it from the screen here because it might be kind of small from where you're sitting. Uh, but if you have a computer and you download it, uh, which most of you look like you do have a computer today, uh, then you can probably see it a lot clearer. Um, if I run the program here, and the program basically has one file and it, it's called main.m. And uh, this is just basically going through in a lot more detail um, the program structure, um, and this would be of the driver program. So if we go through and we take a look here, um, we see the main. Actually, let me see. Maybe I can get this bigger. Ah, here we go. I can get bigger. There we go for some of you who are looking at this and squinting. So we're always going to import foundation, foundation.x, and foundation.h in every file that we actually create. That's a objective C. And uh, so we have the declaration here. This is the initial function. This is still a function. And main is still a function in Objective-C. We don't have this in Java, but this is very C-like. So we declare the function. We call the program. tells it this is when the program executes. It always starts in main. It always looks for main and runs from main as a starting point. And we have two parameters here that are separated by a comma that are passing arguments into the program because this is command line. We had this in Java, but we never really did anything with it because we were, uh, maybe we did actually, one of the assignments actually worked with it if you were in the Java class. But that's basic, very C-like. Then we have the NS string. Well, this is just like string, except for it's of the NS object type. And we're going to call this one, and we're going to use a pointer here. So we're creating a pointer to an NS string object called test string. And uh, once a string line of this is finished, well, no string exists yet. It's just a pointer to a string type. So we have a, actually haven't created the string yet. If we didn't have a pointer here, we would use it like a regular old variable. So this would, instead of it being a reference, it would be a variable, which we can do both ways. We don't have to do it this way. This would work and compile just fine without the asterisk. But I put the asterisk in because I'm trying to show you pointers today. So. Put the asterisk in here. <laughs> makes it a pointer, makes it a reference variable. means it's going to be an object. Because we're looking at object orientation. And then this is the generic, let's initialize the object and allocate the memory for it. Nine times out of ten, you're going to always see it written like this. You're going to see it with NS string alloc, which means create the object for me. And then in it, which means run the initializer. The initializer is actually coming from NS object because, or actually it's coming from NS string, which is not, is just basically going to allow us to take and be able to store a string sequence at this memory location. So it makes the space big enough for whatever string object we might be storing there. So we create the string uh, that the pointer is going to point to, and the init method inst uh, initializers, initializes all the variables in the class. Uh, we don't actually have any variables in the class yet, so it's not really going to do very much. And then here's this at symbol you sort of have to get used to. In C, we never had the at symbol. And as I mentioned before, at just talks to the compiler. It says, this is going to be a string. Here it is. <laughs> Take this string, which is kind of weird. So the reason we start the quotes with an at symbol is to tell the compiler that the following text is an at string. So just think you have to manually talk to the compiler, uh, which is kind of odd, I guess. But uh, all the string constants will always have, in every single case, you'll have the at symbol in front of it. And the at symbol will be used in a lot of other things as well. And then the NS log, and I talked about NS log already in the Hello World program. It uh, basically prints something to the console. Well, the console is the log, which is why it's called the log. So we're going to log some information to the console. And the console is the DOS window or the terminal window console. 
and then return zero. So just like hello world, if we run it on our output screen, output screen on the bottom here, it's going to print our NS log out, and here it does. So it says uh, this is a test string in a test string. So uh, it's kind of like starting from hello world, a little bit slower, going back through the same example. This is what I call a procedural imperative language. This is very C-like. Not very object-oriented. We don't have any objects in this program. So I'm going to take it and close it out and take a look at example. I'm going to skip to example number three, actually, because I probably should have put number three in the number two position, because <laughs> number three is a little bit easier to understand. After I labeled them all, I went, wait a minute, it's easier to understand this. Yeah? Oh, let's take a look. Probably the at symbol was used, but let me take a look. I probably should have asked if there were any questions before I closed it. <laughs> because we're printing out this string constant testing, and then we're going colon, and then the percent testing says, we'll print out this constant here, and this constant here is this one up here. So when we run it, we have the word testing that's being printed out. So you see down here on the bottom, it's hard to see it, but it's real small. It says testing colon. And uh, that's this part here. And we put the string constant in here. So we didn't actually have to create a variable for it. And we could I could have created another variable and put that other variable in here, comma, this variable. But what we did is and said this percent at is saying print, it's at a sort of like a, you know, a, the constant symbol as well. It says we created this one here. This guy's going to be put into here. This is, if you remember the printf, if you've ever familiar with that, this would actually, but string isn't going to print out. But if I said printf, actually here, let's just do this for a second. I'm going to go uh, integer i is equal to 10. <laughs> I'm going to put some C code in here, actually, and show you what the difference would be. Uh, print uh, my number is, and then I go dollar sign D or I as an example, and then I go comma I. If I run this, it's going to print out uh, my number is, here it is right here, my number is 10, if you can see that. And I said this dollar sign D was representing a digit or an integer. Actually, I believe I would also work here as well for integer, but D or I actually works in that case. This here is saying that it's a string constant, which is an object that we told the compiler existed, which is, if I did this over here, it's not going to recognize the A, or maybe it will, actually. Let's see if this works. Now I'm kind of curious. Test string. Now it's going to give me a warning, I believe. What's the warning here? Invalid conversion specifier at. Because nslog knows about the at, because it's part of nslog is part of the ns library, which is the Objective C extension off of C. This is a C command. This is not using ns anything. This is using the regular old C. So it's going to be an invalid conversion. So if I run it, it's probably not going to give me what I want. Oh, actually, it says it's at. Yeah, no. It doesn't understand. It doesn't understand. But the at is actually part of this NS string object. We're going to see it in another example that we have to convert the NS string into another string type if we want to print it out in C instead of Objective C. This is basically telling us that this string constant here, it substituted in. This could actually be anything. So the percent at in here is basically going to be anything that's printable. It's of the NS library compatible format. Hold that thought. If you still have the question in a few minutes. Yeah? When I change it to the i, it just printed test string. But when it is asterisk, it is printing the, it's in the test string. So now I Yeah. Yeah. I 
And that's a very good thing to do. Actually, go ahead and play around with the code. Change it around. And uh, you'll see some interesting... It's the best way of learning it, actually, because then you'll see the variations. Okay, so for those of you who are in the uh, Java class, the first week of that class or second week of that class, remember I wrote a person object, and then I wrote a student who was a person, and then I <laughs> created all these things. That's what we're going to do today. So I put together this example for you so I didn't have to write it by scratch, but it only has person, which means I can probably make a student here if I wanted to and add this to the project. But let me show you how the difference, what's different about this. So what we're looking at is the .h file. Let me make this bigger so you can actually see it. Uh, let's see. So this is our first object. So object to C uses import instead of include. So we've got import. And uh, I'm doing this C style. So instead of doing foundation, which is like the big one, foundation has everything in it. I could do it this way. Or I could simply, if you remember the last example that I gave you, it said foundation, foundation. Or what am I looking at? I'm doing an NS object and NS string, which is inside a foundation. So instead, I got two header files. This actually works if I substitute it out and put in include. I'm not going to get an error message. In fact, it's going to work. <laughs> but it's more standard to start using, so I, I highly encourage you to start using import here instead because it's a better way of doing it. It's a little bit more efficient. Okay. So we're looking at inheritance with NS object. Unlike Java, we don't actually have to say, you know, this is the first class we're creating. It's not really being inherited from anybody. We just say, you know, class person, and that would be it. But instead, we actually have to inherit from NS object to know that this is going to be an Objective C object person that we're creating. Um, so inheritance in the Objective C is shown by the class name, followed by the colon. So we have the class name. We could actually put a space here if we wanted to. I'll just put it in there. Or you cannot put the pit space in. You can leave it like that. It doesn't really matter. It's the colon that's giving us the, the, the information here. So the colon followed by another class name. We have, this is a class name, NS object. And so this is basically giving us our inheritance. This is in our .h file. This is in person.h. And it's part of our interface. And we see this at symbol again that shows up out of nowhere. We own an at symbol. You're telling the compiler that this is an interface. <laughs> if you don't like the way that sounds or you don't that reasoning doesn't make any sense too, just memorize at symbol everywhere. Anytime we tell the compiler something, we're gonna put an at symbol in front of it essentially. We still have our opening and we still have our closing brackets just like before. But the only thing in the opening and closing bracket of our interface that we've declared here is our data. So our instance data is our declared inside of the opening and closing brackets of the class. So the scope is weird. It's inside the file, and that's where the scope's coming from. But the interface is, just has the data in there. So I put this private in here just to illustrate a point. If you don't put the private in here, you don't actually have to. It's still private. You can actually make it public. So if you're familiar with C, or C++, we had public, private, protected, and we had, uh, in C, if we were doing this in C++, it would look like this. And then we'd list all our data. But if we do that, the syntax is going to have problems here. But here we're going to say at private, we could say at public, which would mean nothing, really, but that's going to work. So public, private, or protected. Uh, but by default, if we leave this out, it's going to be private. So it's going to be private. Public? It's going to be pri the data is always going to be private. The data is going to be private. Private by default. Same thing in Java, actually. Same thing in C plus plus. The data members, the data members, are always private. The methods are always public. The data members. For example, name and age is going to be private. We don't want, we don't, out in Maine, out in the driver program, we don't want anyone to touch name and age. We want the methods down here that say get age, get name, set age, set name. Those are the public member, those are the public methods that we're going to access the private data with. So then you don't 
private. It's going to be private, yeah. But it's just for illustrative purposes. If you put private there, then you'll always remember, hey, it's private. <laughs> if you want to, you could change it to public, and then it would be accessible. So public and private is basically telling us anything private is good inside of the class, but not outside of it. Everything public is visible inside of the class and also visible outside of the class. So it's kind of risky. So methods are declared outside of the class. And what I mean by outside of the class is here's the interface, right? And we have the opening and closing. So in Java, we got trained. Everything goes inside of the opening and the closing. Not the case here. <laughs> so methods are declared outside. So methods are defined like this using a return type inside of opening and closing brackets, a description, well, that's the name, colon, and then the argument list or argument type, excuse me, with the argument name. So in it with name, this is what's referred to as an initializer, aka constructor in another language, but it doesn't automatically trigger. You actually have to call this method. <laughs> so the data type is going to be person because it's going to return. Same concept as the data types for return types. You know, when we say integer main, we're going to return main. We're going to turn an integer from main. Well, person into initialize with name is going to return a person object. So we put person in here as a data type, and it's a pointer to a person object because it's going to be the object that we just created, the reference to the object we just created. The name of the method that we're running here is in it with name, um, and it's going to be, a, we're going to have a string that we're going to take in n and an age that's going to be an integer value a for age. This is not the uh, implementation, this is the interface, so it's just the prototype of the method that we're going to implement in the .m file. We also have these here. These are generic functions that are going to be one called name, one called age, and one called speak. So if you have the method, yeah, correct, correct. If you, a very good question. You wouldn't want to, but you could make this one a private method. <laughs> yeah, uh, or you could make it a public method. <laughs> Yeah. So if it, you have a plus here, it's only visible inside of the class. You can run it from the class, but you have to have access to the class. It had to be inside of the class in order to see it to run it. Excellent learning point there. Obviously, this is going to return the age. This is going to return the name. This is going to return a speak. Well, what's speak? That's just some method we're going to put in there. It's going to do something funny. These are function prototypes, mm -hmm. and this is in the interface and then it's the .h file. Okay, I'm going to move on to the .m file. Well, what do we have in the .m file? Well, we have the same thing as before, but at the top here, we don't have to import foundation. Foundation import was up here, foundation and this object .h. Actually, we could have just put foundation foundation in here. Saved ourselves some work, but you know, whatever. <laughs> it wouldn't have been much of a learning exercise. <laughs> in the .m file, we're importing person.h because we're building the implementation for the interface that we defined in person.h. So we have the at implementation person. And in here, these are the method implementations. So this is the init with name. It's the same line, actually. We just take out the semicolon and we put in the opening and the closing brackets here and we uh, do some stuff. Well, inits are going to essentially allocate and initialize because we don't want to do it out in main for some reason. We can do it out in main, no problem. We don't have to have this, we don't have to have this functionality built into the class. But it's common to see it in the class because it makes it more C-like or more Java-like. So if you put it all, if you take all the Objective C requirements about memory and you stick it in the class implementation, then out in main you just use the classes like you're programming in Java. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about memory or anything like that. All right, so this is going to be our constructor. It's going to say initialize with name. 
takes on a name, takes on an age, which is an integer value. So the methods are called by called with a class space method. So when we call this method, we're going to say, um, you know, the you know whatever it happens to be, the name of the object, space, the method. So we're going to eventually out there in main. In fact, I'll just show you out here in main. We're going to call here. Uh, do we even make that one? Here it is. Here initialize with name. We're gonna have person Barb here, and we're gonna run. We're gonna we're gonna go person alloc to create the person, and then we're gonna run it. We could have just actually let me show you something else here. Person, ah, we'll put Bob in here too. Bob <laughs> equals. Uh, let's just go here. Person alloc. In it. Oops, we don't want that one. One in it. In it looks pretty good. I think I need to end it. No, there we go. I'm just gonna complain because Bob's never used is what this is gonna be here because I haven't done anything with Bob. I'm like, where's my message? No, it's actually legal. This is a warning. It's because I'm not using Bob for any it's actually not I haven't allocated him either. I haven't used him for anything. But what I'm trying to show you, and this is this is legal syntax, by the way. But what I'm trying to show you is the differences between calling this function here. This function is gonna create Barb and it's gonna send to Barb a name, and the name's gonna be right here. And then it's also gonna send an age, which is five hundred. <laughs> five hundred years old, by the way. And uh, and 500 is uh, it's just hard set 500 as a number, so I can just like in Java if I wanted to I can make another one you know with name, and I uh, put in uh, name integer with name, and then go name. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Bob. There we go. And then at age. Uh, oops. He's 100. I'm going to have the same message as before, actually. Well, I have to put an at symbol in here. But I'm going to have the same problem as before because I've initialized Bob, but haven't really done anything with him. <laughs> so I'm not using him, so the warning message is going to show up here. But long story short, what I'm doing is making instances of the objects in a slightly different fashion. If I were in Java, in Java the equivalent to this would be person Bob is equal to new person. <laughs> Or it would look like this, um, Bob, <laughs> 100. So this is really the equivalent. Let me take this line out because I'm not going to I'm not going to use Bob in here. Except for there's a slight difference here because when we allocate, we have an allocation. We're going to we're still going to make an instance of the object person. But we have to alloc. So we run alloc here to allocate the memory. We've created a pool up here. We're actually not using the pool in this example. But I put it in here just to show you. Because I believe we're going to get a message here. In fact, if I make this screen a little bit smaller, I can probably see the message. The message says unused variable pool. <laughs> I'm actually not using it. <laughs> Which is the same message I got on the other Bob when I created the, the other instance because it really didn't use I haven't used it in the code anywhere. Yeah, but I'm not doing it that way. Instead of allocating this way, <laughs> so I'm showing you kind of multiple different ways of doing it. So when we make that instances of when we make the instance of the object, we can allocate we can reserve memory for the object using auto release pool and then have a pool to automatically release it, but we're actually, here's, here's, here's why we're not using it. If I take out barb release, do I have a release somewhere else? I probably have a release somewhere else. Uh, it should auto-release. I shouldn't have to release. I could take this line out and the program is going to work actually just fine. Actually, let me just verify that real quick here. If I run the program, Build successful. Here we go. It did, except for it's uh, 
no pull in place is going to give me a warning message because I don't have a pull in place so I could be leaking so just leaking break of object auto release to debug so I'm gonna get Xcode giving me some warning messages so I'm putting this in essentially for Xcode but the program you see actually works down here on the bottom I can see name barb 500 Make this a little bit bigger my name is Barb and my age is 500, but you see I have uh, no pool warnings on the object because I have data auto release with no pool in place, just leaking. It's just leaking the memory out, which means it's not really deallocating it. But this is kind of like Hello World. It's a very small program, so there's nothing. I, I don't actually, because I released everything, I released it in this line right here. I don't actually have any garbage. I'm not really leaking, but the compiler doesn't know that I've done that. So it's not managing my memory. I'm managing the memory. So Xcode is going to warn me about it. So in practice, you just cut and paste and you put this line in. <laughs> and if you didn't release and you had something there and it was out of scope, this would take care of it, essentially. I've jumped around a little bit, so I'm going to go back to the. Correct. Auto release is going to. If we created uh, a different, we, we well, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Actually, I have another example that's going to drain the pool. So we'll we'll see how that works. Because of this here, I don't have to drain it. If if I wanted to, I could just leave this. Actually, this would compile just fine with this line of code removed and that line in, and I just drain the pool, <laughs> and then I would get rid of everything at the end of the program. So down here, I could go, you know pool drain. Whoops, here we go. I'm going to put my semicolon at the end here. And then I would be doing it automatically. So I'll just leave it like this actually. Because uh, it's called, the object that we created was called pool. Was called pool, which is why this is working down here. So let me go back. Um, so what do we got going on here? What I was showing you actually was this line of code right here which is how we're making the instance of the object person. And uh, we're using this little asterisk on here. The asterisk can actually go here if we want it to. More common for some strange reason, I like to put it right here because I know this is going to be a pointer. Most textbooks will have it like that. <sighs> They'll put this pointer symbol, This, which is, really is a pointer symbol, it's a reference symbol, next to the person because I don't know. It just the style. It doesn't really matter where it goes. It can go anywhere you want. It's just like the the colon here. You can put a space between the colon if you wanted to, which I sort of like to do as well. But you don't have to do that. You can take the space out. So it's not. Uh, it's symbol oriented. It's not really space oriented. Oops. I don't know what I just did a few minutes ago. I just I just did some. I removed the bracket. Where was the bracket? Here, let me just go here and undo. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. All right. Uh, what kind of message we got going on here? Instance method and age not found. Return type is ID. <sighs> okay, I'm going to actually, I'm not going to save it. There we go. I'm going to go back in so it's cleaned up. <laughs> Worst case scenario, I doubt. Oh, no, no, it did save it, didn't it? What did I do? No. No, I accidentally removed something here. This is how we fix the problem, by the way. <laughs> Not a bad fix to the problem. Here we go. This is a sign. <laughs> this is number three. <laughs> Loaded fresh. <laughs> I have a tendency to start typing all over the place. All right, here we go. So we were in main, actually. Really? So uh, maybe it's the current version in the past? You mean right here? In the past, it never had that problem. Huh? Perhaps it's required now. Interesting. In the past, it was not. So I guess follow this as an example.
right, so let's, let's just move on here. Um, so we can get the concept, I hope, that this is making an instance of the object person. It's calling it bar. This is the name of the object. It's the reference because we're using the asterisk. Person alloc is allocating it. We're running with... So this is nested, actually. We could take it and put it into two separate, two separate lines and go person alloc, and then underneath it go person, asterisk bar is equal to person, and then from person runs, because this is really a separate method call that's nested inside of this main method call. But people like to nest it like this because it's a little bit easier, abstractly. So, so we didn't finish the implementation of n, so let's go back here and take a look here. So this is the method I've been talking about. It's a instance method. And uh, the method first calls that, and this is almost like saying uh, super with a... Uh, this is equivalent to the Java super that starts the beginning of the constructor, actually, to go back and call super constructor, which is interesting that that actually worked. So in it is the private method of the NS object. If the super constructor returned a successful call, and then continue with the initialization, which means if self. So we are always returned self. So self is it going to be equal to super init, which means if super init is not valid, if it's zero or something, you know, if it doesn't come back with anything, this is going to fail. And then we're down here on the bottom, we're going to return, we're not going to actually initialize anything. So if self, release and retain are the memory here in terms of the n for, uh, for the name that we're going to use. Because we're taking in n up here on the command line. We're taking in n. We're going to allocate some memory for it. We're going to assign it to the local variable that we're using, the instance variable name. So release and retain are memory management methods. And uh, retain increments the count of the pointers to the local memory. Release, release does not, does the opposite. So retain incre increments the reference counter. Release decrements the reference counter. The reference counter is what's telling us that uh, the memory is being used, and then don't garbage collect, don't, don't release it, don't get rid of it. If you uh, didn't, if you created this project by scratch, I did not select auto, um, auto reference counting. Because if you do select auto reference counting, you don't need any of this code. <laughs> but it would be a waste, it would be a shame not to show you this code just in case you run into it. Most of what you can do right now, all this stuff can be automated. So, uh, just keep that in mind. Um, no, most, but not all. Pretty soon in the future, probably all. But right now, about 50% of it's all automated with the automatic reference counting. So n retain name release n is equal to m, and name is equal to m. So we're re, no, we're not we're not getting rid of this. We're retaining and this n is this information that came in from the command from running the making the instance of the object. Name is releasing, which means, well, forget about what was in name before, and now assign name to n. Because we made a new instance of this object. We don't want the garbage that was there before. Don't add it to the garbage. Just release it and allocate this new n that we've retained and put it in here. Age is simply an integer and not a pointer, so it's passed by value. We just go, and you'll like this one, uh, age is equal to a. <laughs> No retain, no release. It's not a reference. Because in the .h file, you'll see integer age. It's just a regular old. If I did this, I wouldn't have to do any of that other stuff either. <laughs> well, name's going to be an issue. Actually, I'm kind of curious. Inf oh, it doesn't match. Statically allocated. Ah, it can't because it's an object. It can't be statically allocated. You have to put the asterisk in. We have to make this a reference type because it's an NS object. Anything that's inherited, NS string is inherited from NS object. It's an object. All objects have to be references. So if this was simply a, a not an NS, it was like a string or something. I don't think we don't have a string in there. We don't have a string data type because this is an NS inherited object, it has to be a reference. When I took away the reference type, the error message told me that, no, hey, wait a minute. The interface type cannot be statically allocated. If it's a 
variable that's passed by value, it's static. If it's a reference, it's dynamic. So to fix it, you have to insert here. And just like Eclipse, actually, if you press return, it'll put the, put the asterisk in for you. So it's kind of very Eclipse-like, actually. All right, uh, but we see integer age here, and the, and the trick to this is not necessarily avoiding pointers completely and not using NS objects for anything, but the idea is to know that if it's going to be NS anything, it's going to be a pointer. So, and because person is using NS, it has to be a pointer. So out here in main, when we created this person, we created him as a pointer. So every instance of a very object because it's using NS has got to be a pointer. If we did, we could actually write this without pointers, without using NS objects, and then we're writing a really low-level basic, you know, make a function, do sum, and give it to integer, so we wouldn't be using any pointers at all. Okay, uh, so let's finish up the M here. Um, so let's see. So age is going to be equal to A. It's passed by value. There's no pointer going on here. This is the same as Java when you took an information from a constructor and you assigned that information, those parameters, you assigned it to the local variables. Self is analogous with this in C++ and Java. So return self. Return this. We're taking self out of person, which is a pointer, to person, which is the instance, which we're re going to return self. It's a pointer to himself, essentially, with the name and the age populated with the, the local variables, or the data members of that particular object. Just as you might expect, I could have called this get name, get age, but instead just called it name and age. So it's running, uh, you know, it's running name, return name, return age. Pretty, uh, and it's in a string, so we're using this um, pointer because it's a string. A NS object. And then we have this uh, method down here, speak. So the only thing kind of really weird difference is we're, we're missing this stuff. We don't have the opening and closing, which you know we don't really have to worry about. Um, instead, because the methods are done differently. So let's speak. So we have the string with format, which creates a string using the printf format, which is what we've got down here. Um, so the at, and here's your explanation again with the, the at, the percent at inserts the NS object. Because at's an, uh, it's a directive basically saying we insert this, uh, this generic constant that we created. And you don't need to call the init method here because the, per the preceding string constant initializes just the string for you automatically. And we're creating a string with speak. Speak is basically going create a result string that we're going to print to the screen, essentially, because we're going to return results here. And then we're going to create a new string, so ns string alloc, initialize with format. Hi, my name is something, my age is something rather with name and age, which is very similar to the printf. You think about it. Um, it's very similar in terms of the concept. And we're initializing with format is just basically a printf-like system uh, method. So in main, we're actually going to use printf, <laughs> just to show you kind of the, what, what's going on here. So we know that the auto release pool here is basically not really well. We're not really using it, but we're going to put it in there anyway by default. Otherwise, the compiler is going to complain, as we've seen. Um, auto release pools is Basically, just like any other object, we're allocating the object and then we're initializing the object. If we don't have an initializer created, and it will run the super objects initializer, which is nice, which is coming from NS object. So we have the string name. This is nothing more than creating a name. We could have just hard set it. We didn't have to actually do it this way. And a string, string with string, which is uh, the method on string. So, you know, in uh, C, C++, we have string class, and we can, str we can do compare string, concatenate string, all the methods that we could run on string. Well, this is one of the methods that we can run on NS string that says string with string, meaning assign the string the string. <laughs> and the string we're going to give it is barb, and we're going to allocate it to name in terms of the variable. So person barb is going to be equal to person alloc, which we create the new person object, initialize with name, and this is the, the initializer we created name, and, and age, which was the second parameter that we had. So I could have done this instead. I could have gone um, 
integer um, age is equal to 500 and then put age in here that works as well so which is the same thing I'm doing here with this uh, string in here name is the string so all right and then we have printf down here on the bottom here and printf can't handle any strings so we use the UTF it basically converts it to a uh, ASCII compatible string format to return the character array this is C this is a C function actually <laughs> but it's a method to convert it so printf which is a C call is a C um, name and then the with a tab which is what the T is and the asterisk s says give me a string here and then line returns the forward slash n and then these are the parameters that we're going to put in we we'll only have one this is a string right here so the dollar sign s is going to be barb name name is running the get name whatever we want to call it. it was just kind of confusing I guess because you know it's the same name as the data member but this is actually running the method name that we have in here so we're running name and we're running age and we're running speak name age and speak are these guys name age and speak so if I wanted to as an example here just some people might be confused I'll just go here get name if I'm going to call it get name I have to come back up here and change this guy here and call this one here get name And then if I go back to main, now yeah, I'm going to call main in the, oops, main, main, there we go. In main, now I'm going to run get name, <laughs> which is essentially running the method get name on the instance of the um, method that I created, call, uh, uh, instance of the object that I created called barb. And then I'm going to run age, I could call it like get, get age, get speak, you know, speak. Speak is pretty clear in terms of what it is. And then the last thing here is just the, the release. Barb as the name of the object. Release, which means the opposite of auto. Uh, excuse me, of alloc. Because you gave the name same and the object same, I was confused, but I, 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 I changed the name. Oh, yeah, this was confusing probably, huh? No, no. Then you say uh, the name is also. Oh. So. Ah. Okay. So let me call this my person. <laughs> no, I just changed the yeah. Name. Yeah. You that could be. Con here. Yeah, I know. No, you're not probably. You're probably not the only person who uh, d didn't see that or had problems seeing that. Let me just say that. My person. There we go. Up oh, down here, my person. So you see, that's the name of the objects. Yeah. We created the name. We created the object right here. We ran this method on the object. That method on the object. In fact, here we can go here. Get name. Get age. If I do that, I come up here and say get age, and then change it here. This is a better example, actually. <laughs> get age. Speak is pretty. Speak is pretty. Uh, you know, it's different. It's not the same. So, so now we have get age here. So we're running this method on this object. Should look very similar to the person example I gave you in Java. It is almost identical. <laughs> it's just written in Objective-C. If I run it, I'm going to get those printf showing up on the bottom here, hopefully, unless I've got an error message. Build successful. Whoops, here's my screen on the bottom here. And I put that auto-release back so I don't have any more messages. So I'm getting a print the name, colon, and then I've got a tab going on here. And then print the age, colon, and a tab. So if I take out these little tabs here, take this tab out here and just put a space in, I'm going to get a space instead of a tab. So it's going to look like this. So these are escape sequences. We don't have these in Java. Well, actually, we do have them in Java. We just didn't use them. Uh, but the n is a line, the, the forward slash n is a line return. So return to the line. The forward slash t is put a space in, a, a tab, space in, actually. This one here, this dollar sign s, is because this is a string, and we've converted it to a string. 
a UTF compatible string. If we left this as a string, NS string, we're going to get an error message because it doesn't know about string. We'd have to run NS log if we were going to do that because NS log is the NS compatible log that is equivalent to printf actually. And it's going to do the same thing as printf, but it's going to work with NS objects without having us without us having to convert it essentially. Yeah. So in the person dot h. Okay, person dot h. Uh, so I made in integer image as private. Then so Well this is private, yeah. Uh, Public? In the bottom in the method. Ah. I made the uh, get age that I made it you made it. Uh, get age as private. Okay. Let's take a look here. It makes it a class so, level, but we're in the same scope. Mm -hmm. so, so what, what is the For inheritance purposes, what does it say here? Conversion specifies the int, but the argument has type ID. Get age. Hmm. Well, it's a generic object. You're going to get semantic issues. Uh, get age not found. Here's your semantic issues here. Oh, let's see. Instance method get age is not found. The return type defaults ID. It turned it into a generic object is what it did for us. So Xcode, believe it or not, Xcode fixed the problem for us. <laughs> it doesn't know about it. If it's private, it's not going to know about it. Only inside of the class. Got another example that's going to show you that. We haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> what we want to do is essentially use it and inherit. Well, we want to use it. Anything that's anything that's inside of the class should stay inside of the class. Mm -hmm. And so, we're not going to normally use the plus. Because unless we're going to implement it inside, as an example here, um, if we had a method that was going to do a calculation on something, if we had like let's say, um, and it was doing something, we could make private methods inside of the classes. It's the same thing actually for Java that it's going to just work inside of the class. We can't call it outside of the class. If we call it outside of the class, it's going to come in as a generic ID, which is what. Well, actually, this is different because if you ran this at a command prompt without Xcode, I believe it should give you an error message. Here it looks like it's converting it for you, although it's giving us a ton of warnings. But, uh, yeah, it's like in Java, if you put something private in a method in Java, you put it private inside of the, you make it um, final or, you know, constant, you do anything, you can't change it after that. Um, if you make something in C++ private, in order to use an inheritance, you have to change it to protect it. <laughs> Which it's kind of different in Objective C, so you basically you're going to use the minus sign for everything. Is is basically how that's going to work out. There's certain cases where you're going to use it inside. I have an example actually somewhere that uses the pluses, but the methods used inside of the class, it's calling the method. In fact, the next one is probably going to do it for us. So, so we can all create a person object, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe. Did you guys create it? Okay, good. All right. So I'm going to leave this alone. Are we ready to move on to something more exciting? Another example. All right, so let's take this up a notch. Huh? Example number two. Example number two is making cars. And it's actually demonstrating the property as well. Because before I mentioned, you know, there's a way of making this more automated. So let me show you the non-automated way first. No, a little different. Doesn't exist in Java. This does not exist in Java. Oh, it's the same. It's the same as inheritance. The inheritance is identical. In fact, if we do that, oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go back here to example number three. And we'll inherit a class from from one of our existing classes. So 
unfortunately, I have to let me go in here and fix this problem here. <laughs> uh, what I did, what I did in the h file here. Let's put this back to the minus. There we go. Okay, so I think I'm fixed now, or just save it here. I'm waiting for these errors to go away. Semantic errors, yeah, whatever. Get age, do I, do I change get age here? No. Yeah. Oh, let's just run it. So, oh, now, now it cleared it up. Okay. So we have person and person is extending from NS object. So we would go file new, create um, file. Oops, file. There's also a GUI for it that we can get to without actually doing that. I can't remember. There's a key combination. Objective class, object to C class. I'm sorry, the first one that's up here. And make sure you actually have coke attach, actually. <laughs> you can actually do C. You can write C, put C classes in here, and use C classes with your objective C classes. But I'm going to go like that, and I'm going to go next. View controller. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh. Because I'm on the wrong one here. Oh, Coca down here. <laughs> Not Coca Touch, I'm sorry. Coca. <laughs> Objective C. We don't want to go from N we don't want to go from NS view. <sighs> Actually I can change it once I get it in here. Let's just go up here. NS object. There we go. What are we gonna call this one? How about student? Mm -hmm. Student. So we're going to make a student class, and I capitalized the S, and I'm going to call it student. I'm going to go next. Can we keep the volume down in the back? It's getting kind of loud back there. Okay, and then I'm going to go create. My screen's so big, it's hard to see it here. Now I have two new classes that showed up. I have student, and I have student M, and I automatically have the import set correctly. But this one here, student.h, is inheriting from... And this object, instead I want to go person. So I change this to person. Mm. And I go, what's wrong with this person? Yep, you're right. <laughs> there we go. That is the solution to the problem. Um, which is different than Java, because in Java, do you actually have to import? You don't have to import. Yeah. What you're using is the word extend. And here, what you're using is this colon that's providing you the extend. So here, I can add things in here. And I can, I have, it's the same concept as in Java. My dot M is going to be the implementation. In here, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I get all the person data. But in here, I can say at private. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's wrong with this? Actually, let's get rid of this. Oh, I don't have my opening and closing here. <laughs> oh, and am I in the wrong file? No, here we go. So I, I, I initialized it. I have ID in here, and I can say, um, Oh, I don't know. Um, integer um, ID. I'll oh, get ID. Let's just do that. Get ID. And uh, let's see. What else do we have in here? We have. Um, what else we got? Get age. Let's see. And then over here on the on the end. So in a student, I just uh, created a get ID because I want to be able to return the ID. But I'm going to set, I could set ID the same way as I do before. I could, uh, I could write an initializer here that took in and made a new part, instead of making a person, see this is the initializer for the person. I could take this, I'm going to cheat sheet here, copy. <laughs> Paste. <laughs> Because I don't like to type. Whoops. No. Paste. Ah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I can't even work a mouse. Copy. <laughs> Paste. 
paste. Uh, we're not person now, we're student. Student. So we got name, age. Age is going to be and uh, ID, which is going to be an int. Oops, uh, int ID. Probably going to get in trouble with this ID and ID all over the place, but we'll see if that works. And then I could cut and paste the code and stick it in here and assign. I could actually go back to super. In here, the same concept. Oops, let me look at the implementation here. I'm going to leave this because this is actually one of your assignments. Your first assignment is to do this. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to do the entire stuff for you. It doesn't work with a person, uh, it works with something else. But in here, where it says self is equal to super in it, I could reinvent the wheel. Same thing you can do in Java and put everything in here. Or I could take name and take age and send it back to this person. And because it's being initialized in here, and only initialize the the age or excuse me the ID to the ID that belongs to the student class, but it's the same identical concept with Java. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Main. Okay. So main. Oh. How did you run it? Did you run it with um, this syntax? Because it doesn't have a with in it with name. What? Okay. So what? What syntax did you use? Did you just say student? Whoops. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. This is where I am. In here? This is the main program. So you put the word student instead of person in here? Yes. That's going to that's going to cause a problem. Yes, that's right. Cuz you don't have this method. Yes, yes. That's what I I didn't know this code. So you can do actually you can do this here. You can do student alloc. Oops. If I don't want caps. <laughs> I hate Xcode. <laughs> in it. Why are my caps here? In it. Why am I capped? There we go. Hello. There we go. My student. Student. What's wrong with student? Let's see. Use of an. Oh, because I didn't include it. So I go up here. And I go import <laughs> student, which is pretty much what you're going to do when you start doing this. There you go. So that should work, except for uh, we still got another message here. Let's see what the message is. Missing. Oh, I'm missing my syntax here. I have uh, insert. So let's just go here. There we go. Nope. I thought I, I thought I fixed it. Well, let's just do this here. We'll do it in two calls. Because what I, I didn't want to actually run the init because there is no init. What's wrong with my student? Missing at the start of the message send expression. Fix it. I'm fixing it. Okay, well, I don't have an init, so I'm doing it without an init. What I really would want to have done is something similar to this, mm -hmm. but I haven't written this yet, so I can't send it with anything. And I have to send it something. Well, let's. This this syntax isn't going to work anyway. <laughs> so, long story short, I have to use it. If if I had wanted to do it this way, I would have to create this method, which doesn't exist. So, or I call it by making an instance of the object, allocating it, and initializing it. Very similar to what we did, uh, actually here I'll show you the syntax. In assignment number, in a example number one has it correctly. So, Actually, did we make an object in example one? I'm not sure if we did or not. 
Uh, we didn't do it. Oh, we did it this way, ns string. This is the syntax that I'm giving it, but I'm not doing an ns string. I'm doing students alloc in it. But there's no init because it's not inherited correctly. And I didn't write an initializer. So I'd have to write an initializer to really make that functional. Long story short, it should work. <laughs> All right, let's go back or move on, I should say, to uh, I think I was on number two. So number two is uh, very interesting. It's the same thing over again, except for it being the theme of students and, and uh, people. Instead, we got a simple car. A simple car is actually kind of interesting because instead of saying foundation, we went coca in the import, which is just an old style. This is a very old way of doing it. It's the same, but we don't get everything. It's just the coca interface. So you can probably see at this particular moment that there's probably different ways of doing the imports. <laughs> so we did the foundation, we did the NS object, NS string, and then we've got Koga. All right, so this is the same as before. So after you look at this for a couple more times, you're going to hopefully get the pattern down. We're using that colon to say that this is coming from NS object. Uh, this is the interface. We have NS string make, NS string model, NS string bin. So this is a car, we're going to make model bin, and then we're going to have a set bin, set make, set model. And then these could be the gets, but we didn't do it. I, I could just call it make model bin. And then here's a convenience method that says set make, which means, you know, make a car. Make it, make it, make it. What is this going to be? It's going to be a new make and model. So we're going to add it, a model and a, and a make make manufacture make model bin. Uh, we actually didn't put the bin in here. This is just going to set the set the make to uh, this would be running as the constructor by the way when we make the uh, the set make. And I'll show you what that looks like out in the main actually before we look at the implementation. So here now we're back to foundation foundation. <laughs> so <laughs> importing the uh, simple car dot h and uh, we know about this stuff already we know about this stuff already simple car my car is going to be equal to simple car alloc in it this is the correct syntax what was i doing before maybe i was missing one of the brackets here i don't know i'm sorry i didn't i, I had the in it written there maybe i misspelled in it i don't know <laughs> it should have it should have int oh i misspelled in it okay that's why it wasn't working but this is the syntax i was trying to write in the previous example because I'm not really running a constructor here, I'm running the init method of the super constructor from NS object. So this is a simple, dirty way of creating one, an instance of an object without using a constructor. Um, over here, we've got the NS number. It's going to be a number object that's going to represent our VIN. Our VIN is going to be with uh, get number with integer one, two, three. And this is the method sending it to parameter one, two, three, and sending it to the message and it's, to, to the object and its number, which is going to be new VIN. And then we're going to go my car set VIN to new VIN, which is this number we just created. And then my car set make. So we're creating, we're running the set make after we actually created my car, which is another variation. Before we made the object by running in it something or other, whatever it was called. <laughs> so this one's not really called in it because we don't want to call it in it because it's not an initializer. It's just a way of automatically creating and uh, taking in a Honda as an example for the make and the model as a civic. So this is going to make a Honda civic out of us. And then we're going to print to the NS log because we don't want to do any more data conversion anymore because this is easier. Instead of using printf, we're going to use NS log at the car is, the VIN is, and then we're going to run make, this is like get make, get VIN, and then uh, this one's going to actually print out two. And it's using the at because we're printing the object make and model out, and then a my car release, and then we're going to we're going to drain the pool in here too. So this is the pool up here, and we're going to drain. So The implementation of the car up here so we saw the .h file. So other languages, in fact, this is kind of crude. I would probably put get make, get model, but other languages don't actually, you know, follow this pattern. In fact, we're going to see in a few minutes we don't have to put this in at all. All we have to do is make it a property instead. 
Um, but before we do that, let me just at least take a look at the .m file that goes along with this. So in the .m file, we're also going to include the coca coca.h just because we want to be different. Could be foundation. <laughs> Simple car .h, and this is the implementation for simple car and uh, I had a space in there around anyway because it's looking for this directive here this is looking for the add symbol uh, to start out the implementation our set methods set the VIN the release is not needed for automatic reference counting but we put it in here uh, VIN release if you have automatic reference counting set on the project type this one none of these projects are using automatic reference counting uh, but if you had it on there you're gonna get an error message actually um, Actually, when you remove the line, they, all of the errors will go away. <laughs> but yeah, um, here we have NS number alloc in it to create it. Create a VIN that is of type NS number because it is a number, and then a VIN is going to be equal to new VIN. New VIN is the one we're going to get when we set the VIN on the parameter line. Set the make same code as before. Make is going to be equal to a, a string alloc. Initialize with string, just like initialize with number. It's kind of similar to the to string in uh, the method to string or to number or to float in other languages like Java and stuff. Um, it's just going to say initialize with a string, which means convert this thing to a string, essentially. Set model, uh, and the model is going to be uh, initialized with a new model that's coming in from the parameter from the command line, and we're going to take that in. And here's our convenience methods for uh, set the make is uh, going to be the new make and the new model. Put that all in one line if we wanted to. Uh, it doesn't really matter. In fact, the whole entire program can be on one line, just like C or C++ or Java, actually, for that matter. Reuse our methods from earlier here. We can put these sites. So these are, these guys are inside. So call for, call self from self. We're going to run the set make and the set model. So in this method here set make that we're running that's going to automate things for us and calling it the convenience method because it's going to set both the make and the model all in one time it really is just calling these two methods <laughs> so we're running the methods inside of the methods now if we wanted to we could make these two methods if we wanted to not make it so we can't do set make and set model outside of it we could set set make and set model to to the pluses this is why we would do it actually but we can't call it now from main, and then we're going to have issues with it. Then we could run it inside. Then we wouldn't be able to run that outside code. It would only be stuck inside. I thought we'll just leave it alone. Um, get method to get the make, get model, get bin. And because we're actually allocating memory for the objects um, in the setter methods, we're going to need, make sure we release the objects from the memory. So we're going to do here we can actually put this method in here dialloc when we release we can run a dialloc and we can actually I'm not really even calling this method I just put this in here to show you one way of automating everything you can release the release 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 <laughs> and then you can run a super dialloc so it's kind of like the constructor in C++ and the destructor so constructors in C++ initialize objects it's kind of like the init that we get in the init, init initializers that we create. And then we have a dialloc here that when the object goes out of scope, this automatically gets called. We don't really call it, it just works on its own. And when it's a way of automating it, so like when an object goes away, we put a deconstructor in there to remove all of the things we allocated. So we don't have any of that in Java because we don't have any memory allocation. So. So if we were to create a dialloc, which we're going to release it automatically anyway, so this is really senseless, but it's just in here because it's just showing you an example of it. Alright, so uh, we've already gone over the main, I believe, so we know what we're doing here. So let's take a look at, uh, actually, let me just make sure this thing runs. I'm pretty sure it will. If I run the program, I should get the following output. On the bottom I do, I see the car is a Honda Civic, uh, the VIN is 1, 2, 3. So I see the output right there. I probably could put some word wrap, I mean, uh, some line return or something in there so it all went on one line, but it's okay. So that's the original long way of doing it. The last version of uh, 
well, I shouldn't say the last version, the last two versions of Xcode and the Objective-C 2.0 put in something new, which is what we're going to see in the car.2. So we have car.2 in here, which we haven't looked at so far, and we're going to see this in a lot of uh, iPhone programming and stuff like that as the property. So a lot of what we did it was kind of pointless and excessive in that first example because it's now automated for us. So the properties automatically give us the setters and the getters, so we don't have to create those anymore. So you can the set it, the getter methods, returning the instances, the setting to set it, also the setter methods. Objective C solves the problem using the at property and then the at synthesize that goes along with it, which replaces the accessors and the and the um, modifiers and makes neater coding. So what do we got here? The same class module that we wrote a few minutes ago that used simple car, same code converted using properties and, and synthesized instead. So property is in our interface. We still have the NS string, the make, the model, the VIN. But now we have, and this is on the make, model, and the VIN. So on the data, we're saying give me a set of Give me a set of setters and getters for the make model in the bin. So property, read, write, retain, which means retain it. And just You're probably just going to use this blindly for a while to get familiar with what the memory is doing. But make it into a property is what we're doing here. Define it as a property. We still have our convenience method over here. The convenience method is so-called uh, runs a set make and a set make. Um, it's taking on a new make and a new model, creating a new car out of it. So it's happening with the property declarations. First you tell the compiler that you're declaring a property by using the property, which is right here. And then we follow the attributes with the property. <coughs> These are the attributes that they're making with the property. And the attributes are read-write status for the property uh, in terms of the memory. Uh, so this is the, and some of the memory management here to retain it given in here in terms of the syntax. We rewrite for all, which means the setters and the getter methods are dynamically created for our instance methods, or instance variables, excuse me, I'm sorry. So the read write basically makes them read the variable, write the variable. <laughs> setters and getters, because that's what you're doing with those private variables, because these are private. This allows us to read and write the values of those variables outside of the class. So this automates things significantly. But unless you know what a setter and a getter is, it's hard to know what this is actually doing for you. So that's why it's kind of looking at both of these today, just to kind of see how it works. So the implementation, it's real easy. We include the word synthesize. And we say synthesize, make, model, and then. If you leave out synthesize, your properties don't get made. <laughs> so synthesize is the complement to properties. We can actually do different things for each property. You can just do this one to write and not read. You know, maybe we just want to be able to set the student ID, but we don't want them to know what their student ID is or something. I don't know. We can protect it, I guess. Or you can bypass it all and create your own if you want to as well. You don't have to use this method. But if you do synthesize here, that's replacing all of the implementations. So you only have one method to implement. The one method you're implementing is the set make. <laughs> you want to do this for your assignments, go for it. Because this is like the, the current trend in terms of this is, this is how you're going to do it, make it faster. You see this all over the place in 99.9% .9 of all of your iPhone programming and Objective-C programming. You're going to see property and synthesize. Because why in the world are you going to make set this, set this, set this, get this, get this? It's a lot of labor, a lot of labor-intensive uh, programming. So you need to implement uh, the implementation file by using synthesize. Think of this as the property replaces all of the interface method declarations for the setters and the getters. Synthesize replaces the actual methods themselves, so you don't have to put the methods in. And uh, basically, uh, the class is going to run and act the same, so I don't really have to run it again. It's going to it's going to basically look the same. I just, in fact, if you want to play around with it, change car to car, simple car to simple car two, <laughs> and you're using the other one. Or remove simple car and rename this one to simple car. And take the two out of there, and you've got the same method. But it, it, it's pointless because you already know what it looks like. Hopefully, so.
All right. How many are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing good on time. Oh, yes, we can take a look at Maine. We haven't looked at Maine. Uh, it's okay. Oh, we've already seen Maine. Yeah. Maine is pretty cool. Maine is pretty... Imp yeah? Oh, yeah, no, I was, I was saying before, it's the same class, same functionality, so you can just replace it if you want to and run it. There's no sense. It's going to get the same output. It's the same class. <laughs> it's just written two, two different ways. One of them has twice as much code as the other one. All right, well, those files are in the OS classes example. That was the learning objective for this evening, was to actually take a look at uh, different implementations. So I will leave you with that. Uh, over the weekend, I'm going to populate the class with the rest of the assignments. I have them written. I just have to clean them up and proofread them and take out my typos and stuff. They're really easy, actually, and they're really wide open. So it'll be like create, you know, it's kind of like the dinosaur program that we saw, but on different themes. I have one that's going to work with a two-dimensional array of objects. And then I have another one that's going to work with just creating some generic. Gener basically, they're focused on um, inheritance and the use of the objects. And then I've got one optional one that you could possibly do with an iPhone, or, you know, as an iPhone app or iPad app, if you wanted to uh, combine the knowledge in terms of uh, applying it towards the to iOS instead of the uh, instead of the Mac platform. I mean, instead of basically instead of making a, a Mac command line, you can actually add a GUI to it if you wanted to. So I will go over those assignments, however, um, on Monday. And uh, so that's what we're going to do on Monday. Then on Monday, we're mostly going to talk about, I believe, we finished the lecture, hopefully. <laughs> yes, so I can get rid of uh, this overview lecture. And uh, Monday, we're going to continue with, did I finish? Did I finish number one? Yeah, we'll finish this lecture. We'll pick up on the assignment descriptions for the next assignments. And I'll go right into uh, lecture number two or three or four. We got tons of more stuff to cover. Memory management. I've got some stuff on alloc and stuff like that to get into as well. So we'll push it ahead. So if you are still having problems figuring out the class concept, you'll have plenty of examples coming up. So. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you. Make sure to sign the roster if you have.